came on the phone. He said, well, Mr. Whiting. I said, yes. He said, have you been to court yet? He said, because we have you listed as a convicted felon. He said, you've been purged from my role. This man had never been arrested, the minister in the community, but yet they had identified him as a felon. Clayton Roberts, the director of the Division of Elections under Catherine Harris, was asked why this list was so inaccurate and who was responsible. They do what we contract them to do. Uh -huh. We have a statute that says we have to have a private company to do this. We put it out for bid. They got the bid. And I think I'm done with this interview. Wait, well, let me just, ask, let me just show you the contract, if I could, Mr. Roberts. Wait. At least 15% of the people removed from the voter rolls were innocent of any crime. That's 8,000 voters. Half of them are black. 93% of all black voters in Florida voted Al Gore. Well, you do the arithmetic, and there's, there's the presidency. I don't think anybody who went to bed last night could imagine waking up this morning and not knowing who the president of the United States... The morning after the election, a startling picture emerged. Al Gore is the winner of the national popular vote, but the state of Florida, whomever wins there, wins the White House. I was amazed to hear that there were about 175,000 ballots in the state of Florida that the machines had not read. Manual recount of punch cards have been done literally thousands and thousands of times throughout the history of our country. And they always come out more accurate than the machine count election night. But the Republicans began to advance the idea that there was something wrong with manual recounts. Raucous demonstrations, uh, including by uh, congressional aides that had uh, Republicans who had been flown in from, from Washington. In Miami, the demonstration was led by Republican staffers. Uh, the canvassing board, when they did reassemble publicly, uh, just decided to stop counting altogether. They based their ruling on the allegation that in Florida, because there was a lack of a uniform standard of counting votes, this violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. You couldn't take them, them seriously in that. If one applied the standard that the court wanted to use, it would probably invalidate all the elections in the country. The notion that all voters should have their vote, vote count equally would, for instance, mean that if different voting machines operate differently, then a state couldn't have different voting machines in different precincts. All states do that. The Florida courts had for 75 years had a governing principle that the intent of the voter prevails over technicalities. Are you really saying that the votes, the ninth... And that's been Florida law 75 years. The Supreme Court simply ignored it. They didn't quote that provision of Florida law. They made believe it didn't exist. Politics is inextricably bound up with the interpretation of the law. There's no use in pretending as if most of the time the Supreme Court acts like judges and in this one case they acted like politicians. No, they, politics is always part of what they do.